Hi there, welcome back. It's uh, Alex Gosling with the Hell in Here. Um, we've seen the Tiger Moth already. I've uh, talked about the Tiger Moth and what the Tiger Moth did. Uh, this behind me is a variation on the Tiger Moth, but it was a Tiger Moth designed for a very specific duty. Um, the government realised from the very early stages of the war that uh, it was going to be necessary for anti aircraft gunners to become very well practised um, in, in shooting down enemy aircraft. Um, so they're going to need targets, they're going to need moving targets to try and shoot at. Um, obviously you don't want to use real life planes with pilots in them or anything like that for that sort of purpose. So they came to the industry and they asked the industry to devise a method of flying an aircraft from remote control from the ground. And the Havlin came up with a successful solution. Uh, and it was this, and it was a remotely controlled version of the Tiger Moth. Um, and um, the idea was that this thing would be remotely controlled from the ground, uh, would, would fly around, uh, and would tow a target behind it, usually a large flag or something like that, that the gunners would be, able to, would be able to practice shooting at. The thing is that, of course, if the gunners missed the flag target and they hit the aircraft, nobody has been killed, so it's a safe way of carrying out the target practice. Um, the, way it was, um, the way it was controlled was from this little kiosk on the ground. Now, Steph, if you want to come in, I'm going to step aside to keep your distance, uh, and you come in and have a look at that. And you can see that this control kiosk is what's controlled it, and you can see what looks on the front like an old-fashioned telephone dial, because that's exactly what it is. Um, and that's how it was um, controlled from the ground. You can see, if you look very carefully at it, that it doesn't say one, two, three, four, five around the dial. It says turn left, turn right, climb, dive, glide, and things like that. And so you'd actually dial up what you wanted the aeroplane to do, and the aeroplane would hopefully hear you, and it would go off and do just that. Uh, and it doesn't sound very promising, does it? But in actual fact, it was quite successful. Uh, and a lot of them were made, 400 were made. The, the Army and the Air Force used them from the ground. The Royal Navy used them. They used to put them on the turrets of battleships. They had floats on them instead of wheels. Uh, and they would fly, we launched off a turret of a battleship. Uh, they would fly around the fleet and they'd all, they'd all take pot shots at it. Uh, and then the thing would land back in next to the, next to the battleship that launched it, uh, which would hang out a crane and would plonk it back onto the turret. Uh, and it worked very, very well. Um, now I have to say, um, when, when I take lots of school parties, not at the moment obviously, but when I do take lots of school parties and Cubs and Scouts, uh, Brownies and Guides around the museum, uh, and they will see this. None of them know that's from a phone, actually. They don't really, really realise that. They think a telephone looks like that these days, which I suppose it does. But uh, in those days, that was off a telephone, uh, so they never believe that that's actually part of the telephone. Uh, the other interesting thing about this is it's not called uh, the Hamlet Tiger Moth, it's actually called Queen Bee. Uh, now, you know that the Queen Bee in a beehive is the lady in charge, she's the boss in the beehive, um, and all the other bees in the, uh, thank you for their step for the <laughs> thumbs up, um, and uh, all, the, uh, all the other bees in the uh, beehive are worker bees, and some of them are called drones. Um, and that's how the name of drones for pilotless aircraft supposedly originated, because this was only the first of its type. There were actually pilotless aircraft being experimented with all the way back to the First World War. But this was the first one that really went into serious production. Um, and when other aircraft later on in World War II were built uh, for pilotless um, aircraft purposes, um, people said, well, what are we going to call it? Well, we've had the Queen Bee, so what comes after the Queen Bee? What's subservient to the Queen Bee? Well, it's, it's a drone, isn't it? It's that sort of thing. And that is why, to this day, pilotless aircraft are still called drones. Little bit of knowledge. There we are. How about that? Thanks for that. Hope you like that. Tune in for the next one. Meanwhile, stay tuned, stay safe, keep in touch. See you soon.